Recording in progress. So like uh, this is the PSAR demo, okay. So this session, I'll give you an introduction about PSAR and uh, uh, how we are going to approach PSAR, how the classes will be conducted, uh, why we should choose PSAR as an option for UPSC preparation. What is the benefits of actually uh, choosing PSAR as an optional for uh, the UPSC, okay. So there are a lot of benefits, one by one we'll uh, discuss everything, okay. So the purpose is first, I'll tell what is PSIR. Okay, I'll tell about my approach to PSIR. Then I'll tell you how to cover PSIR. Then what is the difference between other optionals and PSIR with respect to UPSC preparation? This is what we are going to discuss in this session. So the session will give you a broad outlook about PSIR and also like uh, whether to choose PSIR or not, whether PSIR is a good optional for UPSC preparation, whether it is a scoring optional or not. So like uh, how it is overlapping with the GS uh, uh, subjects, okay. So what are all the benefits you will get by choosing PSIR as an optional, okay. Whether it is scoring or not, whether it is easy to cover or not, all the things we'll be discussing in this session, okay. So uh, online students are slowly getting joined. So first I'll introduce myself. My name is Premanan. So I am uh, in this teaching profession for around six years. Okay. Uh, I, I am handling Indian polity for uh, general studies and political science for optional. So I am also the branch manager for Shankarayas Academy, Bangalore. Okay. So with respect to my uh, experiences with PSIR, so I have given two UPSC interviews. Okay. So I'm one of the topper in PSIR optional in one of my mains. Okay, consistently I was scoring very high marks in PSIR, especially in paper one. So I have scored 144 out of 300 in one of my attempts. In another attempts, uh, I was scoring 146 in another attempt. So consistently I was scoring good marks in uh, uh, PSIR uh, optional. Okay, and with respect to my teaching experience, I have taught in Chennai, uh, Delhi, Trivandrum, and also in Bangalore I am teaching, okay. So this is a, a broad outlook about myself. So before coming to this UPSC field, I was actually associated with uh, corporates for a couple of years. So I did my engineering uh, in mechanical engineering. Then slowly I was with corporates for five to six years. Then I started my UPSC preparations. So this is a small uh, introduction about myself, okay. So PSIR, so that is political science and international relations, okay. So at this present point of time, PSIR is the most successful optional in the UPSC. You will be knowing about the results each and every year. If you see the candidates who have cleared the UPSC examination, so most of the candidates would have been the student of PSIR optional. So why this trend is there? For the last four or five years, this trend is there. Before four or five years, PSIR was not a very famous optional. Okay, so public administration, geography, uh, or literature subjects of uh, the respective state literature, Kannada literature, Malayalam literature, these subjects used to be the very famous optional subjects. But for the last four years, political science and international relations is doing extremely good. So what is the reason for it means? First thing is that political science and international relations is one of the subjects where maximum overlapping with the general studies is there, okay? So before 2013, the GS paper, what we are seeing today was not like this. Only we had only two GS papers and we had two optionals, okay. So after 2013 only, this new trend of four GS studies papers came into picture, okay. After this four GS studies paper was introduced in UPSC, so then if you see the papers, that is the optional papers listed in UPSC, PSIR has a maximum overlapping maximum overlapping from GS paper 1, GS paper 2, GS paper 3, and GS paper 4. So because of this benefit, 
lot of time is being saved in your upsc preparation okay for example if, anyway you are going to study gs so while studying gs itself most of the parts of psir will be covered so that is the added advantage so what are the advantage what is a very important advantage here is that by studying psir your gs score will be enriched like anything if you see the gs marks of the people who have actually cleared the examination with uh, psir as an optional their gs 1 gs 2 gs 3 scores will be very high especially ethics because we will be studying thinkers here also that thinkers will be coming in ethics also okay and essay nowadays philosophical essays are being asked so previously before 3 4 years and all very uh, state forward essays will be asked women empowerment uh, international issue related things nowadays philosophical things are being asked for example a gandhi quote will be given and you will be asked to write an essay so such type of philosophical things will be covered in psir also so the most important benefit of choosing psir is that maximum overlapping which none other optional is having which none other optional is having so i'll i I'll, i'll give you a broad outlook outlook about the overlapping also in my presentation okay so another benefit is that see there will be a season there will be a season some optionals will be doing it if you go before uh, 10 10 years and all pubbad was doing really good okay after 2010 11 then it is it is not doing good okay then at a point of time geography was doing good and this is the golden era for psir psir is really doing good okay probably narendra modi's degree is ma political science i don't know <laughs> a random connect but i don't know so if you take the last 3 years top 10 3 4 candidates will be there top 50 20 30 candidates will be there and again top 100 again uh, around 20 candidates will be there so how this much people are clearing means the main thing is that overlapping with the gs subjects and rather than all these things psir is one of the most interesting subjects to actually study so how it is very interesting we'll deal with it. okay we'll we'll go very slowly one by one i'll give you a very broad outlook about uh, uh, psir then i'll at last i'll tell you how we are going to deal with psir how our classes will be how our assessment test will be okay how we are going to uh, uh, join the gs preparation and uh, optional preparation and we are going to prepare all these things will be discussing in this session first i think the slide is visible clearly for online students right online students you can respond me in the chat box is my voice clear is the presentation visible yes no response yes unmold uh over all there clear okay 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 so first what why and how this is the first slide so what is psir so what is the study what 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 is the study about which we are going to discuss in psir okay so what what is the broad outlook of the subject see psir that is political science and international relation deals with the evolution of the present government systems okay so now we have a government system democratic system we have before that autocratic systems were there aristocratic systems were there at one point of time monarchy kings only were ruling the uh, countries okay how this system evolved so that's what we are going to study in psir but in different different formats okay how the system for example uh, see earlier if you go be before 10000 years or 20000 years or something like that people were there but governments were not there okay so at one point of time governments have got established right rulers have got established right so how this has been coming into picture okay we are not going we are not going back to 10000 or 20000 years we are going to start our study from the times of socrates and plato so why there should be a government okay why there should be a ruler how a ruler should be what is the role of the ruler what are all the things he need to do what are all the things he should not do okay so this and all will be studying in the first part okay then then slowly we will go into the indian government system okay then we will be going into the international government system then the international relations so so at most what we are going to discuss as a whole in psir is that about the state in polity we have studied state mean the country so how the state got established slowly 
okay how people establish their government okay what plato says about state state means here it is the rule the ruling or the ruler or the the people who who are people who are all governed and people who are ruling right so how this is being established how it was running and how it is running so this is what is the broad outlook about political science okay then yeah what exactly psir about it is going to deal with the theoretical part of state how the state has got evolved okay what are all the problems in the state then the present relationship between the state is nothing but the international relation part that is the relationship between india and pakistan india and uh, afghanistan india and us see anyway all these things you want to study in gs also okay international relation second paper gs you want to study you cannot skip it yes or no yes okay so you can overlap this is called overlapping okay and again indian polity can you skip in general studies means no you cannot skip it has been given maximum weightage see i'll show you one thing this is the part 2 of psir paper 1 part 2 and see the syllabus over here sorry not this one see this this is nothing but your polity syllabus so whatever is mentioned here is completely discovered in polity so and apart from polity you will also be studying history you will be getting some two three questions in history for freedom struggle all these things so anyway you need to cover all these things in your gs you cannot skip this so only thing what we are going to do in this part is that we are just going to add something related to political science that's it okay so if you are reading all these things see here this part fully it is totally covered in gs so if you study in a political science point of view automatically your gs 2 score in gs will be very high okay comparing to the people who have taken kannada literature or history or geography okay so you will be getting very high score in gs paper 2 comparatively 10 to 15 marks higher than the candidates who have taken other subjects as an optional so this is a very much added advantage in political science okay so yeah coming back to our uh, presentation okay yeah see why do you want to choose psir as an optional first thing is that overlapping with the general studies syllabus so helpful in essay so how would this helpful in essay yes ah irka okay ah ella on la varu super so how would this going to be helpful in essay see you just take the last two years or three years of essay questions in your in the upsc examination you can see that most of the essays will be philosophical in character philosophical in the sense it will not be a direct question they will be giving lot of quotations they will be asking you to write essays based on that quotation and all these things how this writing skill will come to you means you want to write lot of philosophical things okay so in our uh, psir syllabus the first part that is paper 1 part a is full of philosophies what is democracy what is liberty what is uh, uh, secularism what is what is the thought process of plato aristotle okay what are all the thinkings of uh, karl marx so all these things will be there so this study will give a broad outlook or philosophical outlook about whatever topics you study okay so that is one thing and psir is somewhat dynamic subject okay so you should be daily you will be like uh, seeing your newspapers reading the international issues which is being like followed in the newspapers etc right so that will be very much helpful for your psir preparation because the last part that is paper 2 part b is fully international relations there is a relationship of india with other countries anyway that will be again covered in your gs in gs paper 2 okay then helpful in interview how would this helpful in interview any idea 
any idea how it is helpful in interview how it is helpful in interview means see here whatever might be your subjects whatever might be your even if your optional is kannada literature 20 to 30 percentage of the questions in interview will be from india's relation with other countries okay so at that point of time which international issue is going on for example if you would have attended the interview last year definitely russian crisis that is ukraine crisis questions will be asked to many of the people so what difference you will make in the interviews that you can give a very fine answer to these questions comparing to other uh, candidates who have chosen other subjects as the optional so if you chose psir as an optional or any other subject as an optional that is not going to change the interview happenings in the interview so anyhow you are going to get 20 to 30 percentage of the questions from international happenings okay so you as a student who has studied psir as an optional will have a very good insight about these international issues so you can handle the interview well okay then dynamic paper so it is a dynamic paper not the entire paper is dynamic paper the part b of paper 1 so paper 1 has two parts part a and part b paper 2 has uh, two parts pa part a and part b right so part b of the paper 2 is dynamic that is nothing but international relations so inevitably in upsc preparation you should be very dynamic yes or no you should be following all the current events okay so for example you take a very static subject as an optional okay you take a very static subject as an optional so you will be relying most mostly on that subject to score good marks that is optional you need to score good marks then only you can get into the uh, service right you have taken a very static subject in your optional so you are not showing good interest towards dynamic part of your preparation means automatic you will score very good marks in your optional but your score in gs will not be good so which is having more weightage comparing in the marks means gs is having more weightage so sa plus four papers it is 1250 marks 500 marks for optional so your 500 marks preparation for optional will benefit you for 1250 marks so that is the benefit what you are getting out of psir okay then very interesting very interesting okay so how it is very interesting even all the subjects are very interesting it depends upon the candidates but to my perspective how psir is very interesting means you will study lot of things which is happening today in the politics but before 2500 years or 3000 years plato would have given us a theory you might wonder is plato a god but plato does not believe in god okay karl marx would have done something said something before 150 years but that things will be happening now okay aristotle would have said something before 1500 2000 years but those things will be happening right now so so to explore things in the politics so how the theory is connected with the politics that is very very important right see for example i'll tell you plato gives a concept called philosopher king i don't know how many of you know about it there's a concept called philosopher king plato believes that only an educated person a scholar only can give a very good rule to a country he believes in it so mediocre so the people who have not uh, very well educated are not fit to rule the country this is plato's thinking so for that he is giving a concept called philosopher king and he is also giving a theory how to produce this philosopher king how to make a philosopher king he is giving a theory okay and at last and at last plato himself refuted it but by studying this concept of philosopher king you will understand how plato has actually imagined a king okay for example plato says, says that only an intelligent knowledgeable person should rule a country is it actually applicable every time means no okay sometime even a very highly educated person can be a bad ruler at the same time yeah a person who have not even gone to school can give a very good rule okay so that is how we are going to analyze for that he is giving a system of education also 50 years you want to study for that from uh, first year to 50 years so how it will be very interesting okay then coming back to karl marx for example everyone know about karl marx so at the time of 1940s to 1990s the whole world is divided into two blocks communist block and capitalist block so the ideological the ideological god for the communist block of the government is karl marx who has given the concept of communism okay so karl marx says that 
for example karl marx says that throughout the history there will be only two divisions in the society called haves and have nots and without without something happening in the society you cannot see it but inevitably there will be a struggle between these two groups of people this struggle only spies the history moves the history for example if you take beyond before 2000 years there will be slaves and masters always there will be a tussle between slaves and masters then before 300 400 years there will be a feudal society there will be very big landlords and the people who are working in that Uh, farms there will be always a struggle between a landlord and the uh, person who is working as a slave slave or a bonded labor in the system and now in the capitalist society is saying that there will be a tussle between the capitalist and the workers so this division that is haves and have nots there will be a struggle between this haves and have nots and thus this struggle will be moving the history and this struggle will be going on happening at one point of time this have nots will come to power and suppress the haves with that that struggle will end understand what i am saying so these are all very interesting things you can explore now also struggle is there between haves and have nots yes or no every time it will be there and he is telling that this is called historical materialism historical materialism is material only is the main aspect what is material that is the money or the products or the main motive for the struggle for which they are struggling to earn money to earn a food to earn some products whatever it is so without this material nothing is there in politics he is saying so something which is actually very interesting to study about the theoretical aspects given by these people okay and understand what they thought and what is actually happening in the reality this is a link between theory and the reality okay so this is how how it is very interesting so how we are going to approach psir in our classes means see apart from teaching psir as an optional i'll also give you a lot of insights about how we are going to prepare gs also connecting with psir so ultimately you want to get into service only by getting 320 marks in optional you cannot get into service you need to get a decent mark in gs also so our approach will be how we are going to join the preparation of gs and the psir and how we are going to holistically score a very high marks in the uh, mains examination and get into service this is our strategy so we are not going to separate psir from our gs preparation except certain topics which are exclusively for the psir suppose if i am talking about if i am teaching plato i'll teach the political science point of view of plato and i'll also tell you about how this plato can be used as a thinker in ethics paper understanding what i'm saying as a moral thinker there is a topic called moral thinkers in ethics so there how you can use your knowledge in political science and score extra one or two marks in a question than the other candidate that trick also i'll be teaching you in the classes okay so coming to the syllabus of psir so if you see the syllabus of psir so you have two papers that is paper 1 is political theory and indian politics paper 2 is comparative politics and international relations see here this two parts actually from this part 125 marks will come from part b 125 marks will come so 250 marks totally 125 plus 125 250 marks any how you need to study in gs whether you study political science or not you choose some other optional not an issue but any how you want to study 250 marks of political science in other subjects also in gs you cannot omit this if you choose political science you will study it here and also in the gs if you are not choosing political science for example you are choosing some other optional b for example optional b you are choosing okay you will be studying the entire optional separately for optional subject and anyhow you are going to study the portions of political science in gs but if you are choosing political science you will study this in political science itself in gs you will have time to spend in other parts you can spend a lot of time in answer writing you can spend a lot of time in strengthening your subject etc your volume will be reduced to half instead of studying 100 papers you will be studying only 
50 papers in GS, for example, I'm telling you, okay, because Indian polity already, it's a highest weightage subject in GS. You'll be getting 125 marks in GS paper two from Indian polity. So entirely you are going to study it here. And again, you are going to get around 80 marks in international relations parts in the GS paper two in GS, uh, in general studies already, okay. So, so total in GS, from these two parts, you'll be getting 125 plus 80 marks. So, 205 marks of GS paper 2 is already covered in PSAR. Okay. So, coming to the paper 1, paper 1 part A, that is moral thinkers and political theory. So, first you will study what is political science, what is political theory. Then you will study about liberal, neoliberal, Marxist, all these things. Okay. First, we will start our classes with political ideologies. No, sorry. Western political thoughts. The last chapter of this. First, how we are going to start the political science in our classes means to start with Western political thoughts. This is the base of political science. You know one thing? This one chapter alone in GS paper 1, you will get around 50 marks. Is that much important chapter? Okay. I can even tell you which question will come in which year because again and again the same questions only will be coming. Okay. This one chapter alone around 50 marks you will get in your PSAR paper one. PSAR paper one. Okay. That is optional paper one. So in 10 marks you will get at least two questions, 20 marks from uh, this uh, chapter. And uh, in uh, 15 mark question at least one you will get 35 and 20 mark question at least one you will get. So 50 marks minimum you will get from this chapter. This is that much weightage is given. So here we are going to study about Plato, Aristotle, Machiavelli, Hobbes, John Locke, Mill, Marx, Gramsci, and Anna Hadran. So who are all these people? Okay. As I already said, the theory of political science starts with Socrates. So Socrates' disciple is Plato. Plato's disciple is Aristotle. So what they tell about state? How a state should be, how a king should be, how he should rule, how he should not rule. So to give a good governance, what system they are telling. All these things we will be studying in these thinkers. So, so for example, I'll tell. So Aristotle says that if you leave politics also, politics will never leave you. Yes or no? Yes, you cannot live without politics. So politics travels with you throughout your life. Without politics, you cannot do anything in your Okay. So this is a famous saying of Aristotle who says that you can leave politics, but politics will never leave you. And he says another thing. If someone says that, if someone says that I am out of state, out of state, I don't want state. State means your citizenship is called state. <coughs> I don't want state. He should be a beast or an angel. Beast is not a human being. Angel means God. So only these two people does not need the help of the state. All the other human beings need the help of the state. Yes or no? Without state, you cannot live. For example, a baby is getting born. You need to get a birth certificate. For that, you want a state. You want to go to the government. For example, a person is dead. Again, you want to get a death certificate. You want to go to the government only. So in between, how many places you want to visit the government, see the government without the benefit of government or the support of government, no human being can live in this world. Okay. And this, for example, I am telling you, no one can live without the support of the state. Right. So here you can connect this with the recent happenings of statelessness. Have you heard about this concept called statelessness? So recent issues like Rohingya issues, okay, Sri Lankan uh, uh, a migrants issue, okay, all these things. So people who are not having any country, how they are treated? Okay, they will not be treated rightly. For example, you, you are going to other country, you will have the passport of India. Suppose you don't have the passport of India, you can be called as a terrorist, you can be called as an illegal migrant, you will be given n number of names. Yes or no? Because states only state only protects you. Okay, so this is called statelessness. So uh, Aristotle says this before 2000 years that no one can live without the support of state. That time the present, present state system is not there. India was not there. Even US was not there. Not, no one, no state itself was not there. Athens was only there. That is Greece. 
these are all the people who are from greece who are from greece right so no they don't know whether india is here uh, america is here europe is here nothing okay so that time itself aristotle says that without the support of state no one can live in the world so present system also same okay without the support of state we cannot live okay so then machiavelli so this person is somewhat very interesting okay so for example you know you all know about gandhi right gandhi so how will be gandhi's thinking very moral okay very ethical okay non violence ahimsa truth all these things so you want to write answer about uh, for a answer to a machiavelli related question means you should write all these thing opposite that's it machiavelli says that there is no ethics in politics you want to cast the power do whatever you want okay so machiavelli is called as devil's tutor devil's tutor okay he says his only aim is to is politics if someone who wants to enter into politics right the first book we want to study is machiavelli is the prince the book he says how to cast the power don't think about ethics and all don't don't think about loyalty you want to cast the power do whatever you want that is in politics and love there is no ethics it's a famous quote of whom can you tell me ha huh? alauddin kilji okay anauddin kilji says that in politics and love there is no ethics you know from where alauddin kilji like inspired it from machiavelli only okay so machiavelli is such a kind of person so machiavelli is a person who has actually separated ethics and politics okay so before machiavelli everyone sees politics as a noble job so machi only machiavelli only first said that politics is not ethics and all just keep this ethics god everything outside machiavelli says that nothing but catching power and holding power is politics if you have power you will be powerful you people will act, people will follow whatever you say if you don't have power you should follow whatever people with power says so totally a realistic approach to politics is given by machiavelli then these three people hobbs lock and mill they are called social contract theorists so from here only this model concept of democratic system comes into picture so what is democracy it is a contract between the people and the ruler yes or no for example every 5 years election is happening so many parties will be contesting congress will be contesting bjp will be contesting in indian scenario okay they will tell after winning in election i'll do this i'll do that so whichever you feel that which is actually like which is feasible which party will do it or not to that party you are voting and giving them a five years contract to do certain things to you yes or no yes so this is called social contract this system of social contract was actually introduced by these three people only okay but hobbs gives a certain ways to establish the social contract mill gives a certain ways to establish this contract law gives a certain ways to establish a contract so this is one thing then there comes the hero of the political thoughts that is the karl marx every year there will be around 15 to 20 marks from this single chapter karl karl marx and you know one thing this karl marx with if you, if you understand the thinker as a karl marx so how many places it will repeat i'll show you see here marxist here if you understand marx then you will understand liberal and neo liberal okay again see here marxism in each and every part of the political science syllabus this word marx will again and again come again and again so why marx is that much respected in political science syllabus by upsc is that he is the one who has given an alternative to capitalism so for example 20 people are sitting everyone are saying the same thing one person is giving an alternative means you will call him a hero yes if one person is giving a solution to the problems of this 20 people you will call him a hero of course he has not shined in politics so communism is no more available in india except in kerala okay everywhere it has got defeated but still communism is needed why 
if communism is not there capitalism will eat you will eat and will will digest you like anything yes or no there should be always a counterweight for a weight if a counterweight is not there this weight will grow on and it will eat the entire system yes or no yes so the problem what what marx says is that very simple why you are poor because he is rich simple okay why you are poor ask a question to marx he says that because he is rich okay how he is rich how to how to actually de establish this establishment how to de establish this establishment so to a class struggle through a class struggle okay see usually if you see the rich people will be handful of people poor people will be very huge numbers how this handful of people control this huge people through the power okay if the power comes to this needy people then whatever this people say that should be followed by the handful of rich people so it is called as class struggle this calls a called as a class struggle he says that one day the workers will overthrow the system and they will establish a government where the workers will dictate things to the capitalist okay so after marxism came into picture why marxism came into picture means after industrial revolution the system of capitalism established like anything throughout the world okay after industrial revolution in industrial revolution people were exploited like anything so they were forced to work for 16 hours 18 hours 20 hours without giving proper wages food etc okay this is the time where in the city slums got established because people will go from villages and they will settle in the cities to work in the factories they will not have home to live there so they that's how the concept of slums came into picture so their health got deteriorated they were not given proper wages okay so by seeing all these things marx wrote a book called das kapital okay in this he is giving a solution to the plights of the workers how to overcome this problem how to overcome only way to overcome the problem is that to get the political power and now marx is saying that to get the political power only you can overcome from your problem the same ambedkar says in different way what is the solution for all your sins to to, to come out of all your sins the only one solution is that cast the political power for dalits he says in india so how you can get a respect establish your own government establish certain thing that without you you can you, they cannot form the government then you will get the power then change the entire system so the time frames were different okay the connotation was different but the solution is same between marx and ambedkar catch the political they like this lot of interesting aspects what be, what is the difference between gandhi and machiavelli what is the similarity between marx and ambedkar okay, what is the similarity between gandhi and marx you know so gandhi and marx are extreme poles they don't have any connections gandhi is a capitalist you know that gandhi is a hardcore capitalist marx is an hardcore communist or socialist okay and there is a similarity between marx and gandhi how many of you know about it online students any idea and this question was asked this question was asked before 3 years in your upsc prelims you you may wonder except political science uh, students no one would have answered this question yes or no because no one will study karl marx in their subject this question was asked if you want you can take 2017 or 18 gs uh, prelims question paper and you can see this this was the question asked what is the similarity between the ideologies of gandhi and ambedkar four options was given you know yes there is a similarity both of them want a stateless society both of them want a stateless society so what is the state state is nothing but government why a government is needed why a government is needed any idea why a government is needed to solve the problems of the people to maintain law and order okay to give to give something to the people for their demands okay suppose marx says that marx says that once the workers establish their government okay so everything will be equally divided between everyone for example 10 people are there in a country okay okay so 10 kg of resources are there and this 10 kg of resources will be equally divided and given to this 10 people 
so everyone will be having everything equally and they can produce their own so where is the need for a government where is the need for a government there will be no need for a government this is called stateless society and gandhi on also wants a stateless society but not through this class struggle um, uh, marx says that through class struggle this stateless society will be established but gandhi says that through panchayat raj this uh, this stateless society can be established in polity will be studying panchayat raj in article 40 in dpsp panchayat raj has been mentioned it was established by 73rd and 74 constitutional amendment what is the main objective of panchayat raj is that to establish a stateless society self governance but the approach to establish this differs from marx and gandhi understanding so then gramsci and anna hadran they are somewhat specialists if i tell you will not understand it now so this is how you will study the western political thoughts so after studying western political thoughts we will be going to sorry we will be going to this sorry we will be studying about this concept of political ideologies liberalism socialism marxism fascism gandhianism feminism fascism and all you would have heard about it so uh, mussolini has established in italy and it's it's another variant is nazism in germany okay and feminism feminism very interesting concept nowadays lot of questions are being asked in feminism concept why because lot of things are discussed in feminism nowadays okay so a lot of judgments are coming you know what is feminism what is feminism two women are here in offline yeah online many women are there yeah any idea about what is feminism ha huh? you know one thing in, if you want to understand one thing you want if you want to understand feminism you want to first understand what is the difference between sex and gender these things and all we'll study here very interesting actually see sex is a biological entity you cannot change it gender is a social entity okay gender was established in order to control the female by the male okay so feminist says that personal is political what is this personal is political very famous uh, quotation given by the feminist scholars okay so why feminists are not shining in the political life because they are suppressed in the personal life this is the ideology they are suppressed inside the home so they cannot shine outside the home why female leaders are very less in this world because in house there is no equality between men and women so women are not given equality women are not treated equally if, even though if they have a lot of uh, uh, even though they have lot of uh, courage to do certain things they are not allowed to do certain things okay all these things will come into picture there are three waves in feminism first wave second wave and third wave first wave feminism asked for equal political rights what is equal political rights means before 200 years and all men only will have voting rights women will not be having voting rights you know one thing we will be saying example of us for many things yes or no so us is that us is that very much developed you know one thing us got independence in 1700s 1776 i guess okay oh but it gave voting rights to women only after 100 years of its independence how many of you know about it huh? so first wave feminism talks about equal political rights give me voting rights i will also contest in election etc second wave feminism talks about social and economic rights okay i should also study i should also walk freely in the uh, society i also have equal rights like women like for example recently uh, before 3 years before 2 years uh, the sabarimala judgment came these are all social rights women also can enter the sabarimala temple and third way feminism is called radical feminism which says that we don't want men support itself even to give birth to the baby we can go for ivf very radical feminism very radical feminism no support of men is needed in any walks of life we will not be projecting ourselves like men but we will be independently we will be uh, living our life without the support of men even for marriages even for giving birth to babies etc very radical feminism okay and also talks about environmental feminism etc one of the famous thinker there is a thinker called vandana shiva she says that global warming is because of men 
and all that. She says this. She says that global warming is because of men. How? If women would have ruled the country for the last two thousand years, global warming would not have occurred because men always see the politics as a power struggle because men means masculine in nature okay so if women would have ruled the world for last 200 years this many world war would have not occurred global warming would have not occurred ozone layer depletion would have not occurred all these things she tells i am not telling it actually it's very interesting to study right so all these things are called feminism of course it might be true also yes for example what is the main or what is the maximum global warming happened at the time of industrial revolution you know one thing at the time of industrial revolution not even a single country was ruled by women might be women would have ruled the country they would have seen seen uh, industrial revolution in a different sense they would have not gone for this much depletion of uh, resources i don't know it is all like uh, our own understanding about the world only and even there are also some women rulers who have actually given uh, done a lot of things for example margaret thatcher she was also a women ruler only yeah but she has also exploited the resources but vandana shiva says that the main uh, culprits for this uh, global warming is men okay so something very interesting to study okay so so after this we will be studying about all the topics what is justice what is equality rights democracy concept of power okay all these things we will be studying you know one thing the beauty of this topic is that you will acquire a very good writing skill you will acquire a very good writing skill okay especially essay writing you will be acquiring very good writing skills okay this this is the base of political science you know one thing 50 percentage of our classroom timing will be spent in this single part alone remaining 50 part all the three other parts we can complete because this is the base this is the base everything every other chapters are connected with this first part only this is paper one part b as i already said this entire part is nothing but your general studies nothing special fully general studies so first freedom struggle satyagraha non cooperation civil disobedience movement revolutionary mass movement peasants and workers movement okay then what are all the perspectives in the national movement then legacy of british rule then coming to the polity part salient features of indian constitution preamble fundamental rights fundamental duties directive principles parliamentary system amendment procedure judicial review basic structure doctrine then principles of union government executive legislature supreme court then coming to the state organs then panchayat raj statutory organizations like election commission cag everything you will be studying in your gs okay you know one thing gs with your gs knowledge alone with the gs knowledge alone 1.3 marks is assured <coughs> in psir paper 1 only thing is that we want to manipulate certain things in your writing you cannot write like a gs answer we want to write like a political science answer but knowledge is same so we we cannot change our preamble or fundamental rights yes or no what you are studying in gs only here also we are going to study but we are going to study in a different sense that's it okay understanding what i am saying online students are you following online students yeah okay so this is about part b then this is paper 2 this is paper 2 part a so this first two chapters alone it is pure political science it is pure political science this two chapters okay so comparative politics and state in comparative perspective but see here this chapter it talks about political parties pressure groups social movements and all these things this will be again there in your gs paper 2 in your general studies okay then globalization it is a general topic you want to study for your gs also okay globalization okay then approach to international relations again here the same marxist system will be coming and this and all this two chapters or uh, yeah this chapter is pure political science and come here balance of power deterrence 
world capitalist economy all these things you want to study in your world history world history world history is also covered in our psir like world war we will be studying cold war we will be studying what is the political situations at the time of cold war we will be studying here it is rise of superpower non alignment movement collapse of soviet union all these things anyway you want to study in your world history again we will be studying it here okay then evolution of international organization there is a subject called international organizations in your gs wto united nations all these things again you will be studying here also okay united nations uh, wto and this organizations again you want to study in international relations uh, eu asia and apex arc everything in gs again we will be studying and global concerns this chapter is very very important in this paper here from this chapter alone you will be getting around 40 marks in contemporary global concerns so democracy human rights related issue environment related issues gender justice terrorism nuclear proliferation again all these things daily you will see all this news is in your newspaper so i'll i'll also teach you at the time of classes how to approach the newspaper for psir india and the world this is the last part of our syllabus this is nothing but again your general studies international relations only they are just going to modify your answers for political science that's it they are not going to do anything with respect to our content content is same like our gs content only see here india's foreign policy all these things will be there in your gs paper 2 syllabus if you take the syllabus you can see the same wordings more or less in your syllabus okay so all the four parts maximum overlapping is there only in this optional so that is why why people with the psir is clearing more means only thing is that it is not a, a magic and all nothing but they have lot of overlapping in the general studies that is the main reason why psir is actually shining well for the last 4 5 years okay and one more thing is that the average score so usually when we are choosing an optional we will also look for last 3 years how much is the average score we are getting in a subject okay you know 275 on average if you write a very very average answers also 265 to 275 guaranteedly you can get in this optional but some other optional it is very hard to even get 250 or 260 so nowadays literature subjects are not shining good before 3 4 years and all people used to get around 300 350 in literature subject nowadays it is not doing good okay so average 275 you can get so you can push your mark up to 320 in psir lot of evidences we can show so the people who have cleared with psir easily they have crossed to 270 if you're scoring 270 plus in optional your chances of getting into the service are very bright okay because if you are studying psir as an optional automatically your gs answers will be reasonably good comparing to the other candidates but you should study otherwise it will not happen okay that we cannot do anything if people will really be take psir automatically you will clear the exam no it is not like that again you want to study attend the classes write the test regularly okay so all these things need to be done then automatically you will clear this uh, paper in a uh, very fine manner okay reference books so these are all the reference books so i will give you a proper notes proper notes will be given so i i'll tell you before itself in my class i want each and every students to write the notes i don't want people to sit and only listen and go to the home no not allowed okay the what is the benefit of <coughs> writing in the classroom is that <coughs> first thing is that your handwriting will improve your speed of writing will improve and your writing skills will improve okay so even though these are all the reference books okay my note should be your basic reference material i will cover each and every word in the syllabus and i will give you the notes approximately 500 to 400 to 500 pages of notes i will give you okay in four months okay daily you i will explain because psir is all about how you write the answer okay plato i can explain in 10 15 minutes but how you are going to relate plato with the current events and write an answer that is very very important okay so 
gs topics not like gs for example indian polity is there so we are not going to cover indian polity again like gs i am going to tell you how to write answers for gs uh, uh, for 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 the polity part and i'll give you some for example uh, in fundamental rights fundamental rights is there we would have studied about articles in fundamental rights in our gs okay people who have not studied gs with me i'll give my gs notes also because i would have given for our gs students i'll be teaching polity so they'll be having around 200 pages of notes actually so that is more than sufficient in that what need to be added is that so people will be telling commenting on that okay so how preamble is very important some thinkers will be tell, telling something okay so how fundamental right is very important so the beauty of answer writing in psar is that you want to quote these people in your answers so for that i'll guide you but if i take like gs again what is article 12 article 13 it will take one year to complete the entire psar nowhere it will be completely studied but i'll make sure that you write a good answer in the polity part of the psar okay international relations i'll cover fully even though because uh, even though it in gs it is covered also i will again take the international relations part polity alone i'll teach you in a different manner how it is actually for psar not like an general studies point of view understanding okay so this is the reference book list so this first part alone more books will be there second paper and all books will be very less okay so the entire second paper only two books is more than enough my notes itself will do it okay first part is first part is very important why because it is the base of the political science okay second part is full of polity already you would have covered lakshmikanth already you would have covered bipin chandra ncrt for freedom struggle that is more than sufficient okay this book if you want you can buy otherwise not needed dd basu most of the people will be having first 100 pages of dd basu you can have a read it will give you a lot of good understanding about fundamental rights dpsp etc the writings will be very good okay so this four books only it is very very important for your preparation other books and all with my notes itself you can manage the paper okay one minute then so this is the main part these are all the overlapping parts with the gs so in prelims indian polity fully it will be overlapping indian freedom struggle will be overlapping okay bilateral relations will be overlapping international organizations will be overlapping environment current laws and current events partially not fully okay we will not be we will not be actually dealing with uh, what is ecosystem what is biodiversity not that but international part unfcc paris accord kyoto protocol all these things you will be studying here and current events this is very dynamic so more or less i think except science and technology geography everything is covered here in your prelims coming to mains in gs paper one again freedom struggle and some parts of world history and social issues are getting covered how social issues means i'll again show you this social issues how social issues means i'll just show you all. yeah yeah here it is this chapter is nothing but social issues caste religion ethnicity issues that's what you will be studying it in the social issues in paper 1 so these are all the topics covered in gs paper 1 in mains and gs paper 2 constitution polity social justice international relations full paper is covered nothing is left governance only minimum weightage is there around 40 marks you will be getting from governance that too with the knowledge in polity you can manage it okay in gs paper 3 security related issues and environment again not the theoretical sorry not the basics of environment we will be studying about unfcc kyoto protocol all these protocol kind of things you will be studying then gs 4 moral thinkers and philosophical part will be covered and essay nowadays fully philosophical essay is only being asked so you will have a very good writing skill if you start writing political science okay so 
Yeah. So this I want to show you how a political science question paper will look like. Whether it will be very tough questions or something like that, or it will be very simple, like a GS question. See here, this is the question from last year, UPSC question paper of political science, paper one, part two. See these questions, they all will look like GS questions only. Constitution of India is a product of historical process, rich with constitutional antecedents. The constitution makers face the great task of forging a common national identity in the face of unparalleled social and cultural diversities in India. Mention the founding principles that define Indian constitution. Analyze, the, this is a political science question. Underline significance of first constitutional amendment. Already I have given this notes in your GS itself. First constitutional amendment as Champakam, Dorai Rajan case, uh, all these things will come into picture. All will look like GS questions only. See the sixth question. Constitutionally, reconciling the fundamental rights with directive principles of state policy has, le has led to frequent amendments to the constitution and judicial intervention. This is nothing but you are going to start with the uh, like uh, Shankri Prasad case, Golaknath case, then you are going to explain Keshavananda Bharati case. That's it. Okay. This is 20 mark question. 15 mark question. Role of the president of India becomes more significant during a minority government and a coalition government. This is what current event and president anyhow you will be studying in your GS. Do you think that despite having significant limitations, the Panchayat Raj systems have strengthened the process of democratic decentralization? Again, a GS answer. Indian party system is shaped by a complex interaction of the country's federal structure, electoral system and social cleavages. Do you think that there has been a gradual shift in the basis on which the demands for the creation of new states have been raised in different regions of the country or India? What explains India's modest improvements in social development outcomes, even as a rate of growth has accelerated since the initiation of the economic reforms? This is somewhat political in nature. The success of electoral democracy can partly be attributed to the status and the role of the election commission of India. Examine the evolution of jurisdictions of Supreme Court of India as a constitutional court. Constitutional cases, again, Minerva Mills case, Kashwananda Bharati case, Puttaswami cases, all these things you can write. Explain how caste as a social category is also becoming a political category in the democratic politics of India. So, if you start reading GS answers itself, this 125 marks, it is guaranteed for you. We have choices here, okay. You can choose your questions, whichever is comfortable to you. Okay. This is in paper one. So without touching any political science oriented topics itself, you can answer this many questions. This is a last year question paper. Okay. Yeah. This is paper two part B. That is international relations part. Okay. So here discuss about the implications of lookist policy. Again, this is there in your general studies, look his policy, you will be studying. Okay. So then explain the philosophical foundations of India's foreign policy, how India's foreign policy are framed. Again, this is GS kind of thing. Intellectual property and quad, it is again and again coming in news about this quad. Afghanistan, Taliban issue, again, it is coming in the news. Non-alignment, again, you will be studying in your general studies about what is non-alignment, why India adopted non-alignment, everything we will study in world history. Okay. India-China relations. You can write n number of pages about India-China relation, current trend. Okay. India-Bangladesh, border issues. Again, it's like a GS answer only. But you cannot write like a GS answer. That is different. Okay. You should write like a political thing. That you will be uh, getting that ability once you start attending the classes. Okay. South Asia is considered as world's political and economically least integrated. This question is nothing but they are asking about what? One minute. This question is nothing about, they are asking about what? They are asking about SARC. They are asking about SARC. SARC is not working properly. It is very least integrated. Why it is very least integrated? Why? Because there is no, there is a lot of problems between the South Asian neighbors, India and Pakistan, enemies. Bangladesh and India, we have border issues. Okay. Nepal, now shifting towards China. Okay. Sri Lanka is in crisis. Maldives is in crisis. 
okay that's why india the south asian countries are not getting integrated failure of sarc the question is nothing but failure of sarc that's it so then how do the constituent states influence the foreign policy making in india constituent states how states influence foreign policy example west bengal will actually play a very major role in the foreign policy of india with respect to bangladesh okay kashmir will play a very deep rooted in influence on the uh, pakistan uh, foreign policy okay tamil nadu will play a very deep rooted influence on sri lankan foreign policy so that is what is the question is so see here how to how the constituent states influence the foreign policy making in india okay current events you can write the answer examine the evolution of india's role in global nuclear order so how india has actually made a influence or given an influence in the uh, nuclear order of the world india has not signed npt india has not signed ctbt india is with the very clear cut idea that if nuclear weapons need to be abolished everyone should abolish but the p5 countries permanent kind of permanent powers are there right p5 countries in the un the super powers they are saying that v5 will have the nuclear powers but you should not have it so india is not with that policy okay so why india is actually going with this policy why india is a nuclear state india is a nuclear state because china is a nuclear state very simple okay so nearby one person is sitting with a knife you will have a fear right you will also have a knife means he will fear to actually assault you because you are also having a knife very simple why india gone for a nuclear weapon means china a yeah, credibility issue so china was a nuclear power in order to safeguard its credibility because already in 1962 india lost the war with china so india had a moral fear that again if a war comes we will be in a very pathetic situation if you are not having a nuclear weapon so automatically india gone for a nuclear so why pakistan got a nuclear weapon means india was a nuclear power very simple okay so all these things okay then see the eighth question relations between india and russia are rooted in history mutual trust and mutual beneficial cooperation so this is actually asked because of the recent crisis in russia and ukraine how india is siding with russia even though many western powers are actually against it there was a very uh, beautiful interview given by our external affairs minister there was a western uh, western newspaper western media was asking questions to our external affairs minister jay shankar about why india is siding with russia why india is still purchasing oil and gas from russia so very simple statement jay shankar will be telling honorable external affairs minister will be telling this you know if we calculate the amount of oil india is purchasing from russia it will not be equal to a single afternoon's purchase of the west from russia that's it they will not never open the mouth because it is being projected that india is getting oil from russia india is still having uh, like connections with russia even after ukraine issue you know the reality still the western countries are purchasing oil and gas from russia but it is projected that india is only getting oil and gas many european countries are still getting because european countries only source for natural gas and oil is none other than russia only okay if they want to get it from saudi arabia the distance is very high so nearby a huge producer is there why are you going to get it from saudi arabia understanding and saudi arabia is producing only oil not the gas but russia is producing both natural gas and oil understanding so this is actually with respect to the current political situations around the world discuss the sustainable development goals set by the united nations identify the drivers of india's new interest in africa so all this anyhow you study it in political science or not you take political science an optional or not you are going to study in general studies you are not going to escape from all these things okay so this is how political science is very helpful for the students to crack the civil service examination because of its syllabus getting overlapped with each and every paper of the general studies and another thing is that we'll be enjoying political science why because it's very interesting and very dynamic so the first part is full of theoretical part even though it looks like a theoretical part so plato is dead before 2500 years but still his ideologies are alive till plato so people who want to approach politics in a scientific way the first book they will be studying is plato's republic okay for example it's not like in in india politics is something different so whomever can enter into politics without knowing what is politics but properly a person want to be a politician 
he wants to be a trained politician not a seasoned politician he want to be a trained politician so what book first reference is the republic by plato okay then the last reference will be the prince by machiavelli so only an ideal person cannot win in politics you will be a pragma you should be a pragmatist you should be a realist so that thing will be given to you through machiavelli so indian scenario how you will learn indian scenario i am i am telling about western thinkers only there is an another chapter you know that indian political thoughts here is a chapter so here you will study about dharma shastra artha shastra so india's machiavelli is none other than kautilya or chanakya so artha shastra you will be studying so you want to know about some noble things about india buddhist tradition you want to study you want to study about minority thoughts <clears throat> minority perspective said ahmed khan you want to study about uh, the the person who started as a revolutionary and ended as a saint who is it arvindo you you have visited pondicherry arvindo ashram it is nothing but arvindos arvindo started as a revolutionary okay he threw bombs on the british people suddenly he changed into a saint so a, a connect between a revolutionary and a saint mindset how it will be there is the thinking of arvindo then obviously you'll study about gandhi's thought then ambedkar then mn roy so gandhi's thought we will not be studying like a general studies and all gandhi has given lot of theories he has given a theory of satyagraha theory of bread labor theory of trusteeship concept okay all these things you will be studying here and all these gandhi's thoughts will be helpful in your essay writing without gandhi you cannot write any essay in india because you are writing union public service commission exam you're not going to write pakistan service commission exam so you should quote gandhi to show your patriotism because nowadays it is expected to show your patriotism rather than hiding right so you want to show it in the paper so you want to write about gandhi okay so with gandhi's quotes itself you can write four or five quotes in an essay which will impress the examiner okay so this is how we are going to this is about an actual about political science is an optional to upsc preparation so how we are going to deal with you uh, psir okay so we will start with the first chapter that is uh, western political thoughts then we will one by one cover the entire syllabus of paper 1 part a then we will move to paper 2 part b okay then we will complete full paper 2 at last we will go to the polity part because it is already covered in your gs okay so what is the system of study daily you will be having two hours of class from 5:30 to 7:30 weekly thrice or four days classes will be there mostly four days classes will be there monday tuesday thursday and friday you will be having classes so after a particular portion is completed assessment test will be done it will be evaluated and personally the paper feedback will be given to you so around 15 to 10 to 15 tests will be conducted for the entire uh syllabus coverage okay and i'll be open to clear your doubts at any time we'll be having a separate telegram group for our psir students okay you can reach me at any time through the telegram group i'll be here only in bangalore i am uh, uh, like seated in bangalore only so you can come to my cabin at any time and get your doubts clarified with respect to psir okay so the classes are will be very interactive it is not a one side process i am not going to say teach any rocket science or something like that because all the parts of psir are, are very much uh, like uh, discussion oriented topics only so i want you people to be discuss a lot in the class and make use of the session so feel free to actually ask any doubts uh, and uh, utilize me as uh, much as possible okay because like the thing is that uh, what is the problem with the freshers is that they start with a very good force but slowly that force will get reduced so i uh, i'll make sure that that force is not getting reduced uh, during my uh, sessions but at the same time you should be following the classes regularly do not skip the classes should attend the test regularly and definitely i give you a surety that i can push you to a very high levels in psir optional okay that uh, that responsibility i'll take but that responsibility should not be a one sided responsibility you know you should not be like uh, believing me you can believe me completely but you should not rely on me completely because the exam i cannot come and write for you you only should write for that whatever assistance that can be given from my side it will be done for sure okay so this is about the uh, uh, demo class for uh, uh, psir we'll have an one more demo after 10 days okay the classes will be starting in the month end or in the first week of 
september mostly in the first week of september we'll start the classes so like uh, yeah people who wants to register you can start registering or you can register whatever dates uh, you wish before the starting of the class that is not an issue so it is the time for clearing your doubts uh, any doubts so like after i am stopping it looks like uh, rain has stopped right oh is it so yeah online students any doubts no doubts so any doubts online students can type in the chat box anmol says no guru prasad bharat vidisha ragu ranjita shakti samar any doubts anandan here no doubts if you want to ask anything you can ask no shall we wind up the session i hope the session was useful with respect to psir as an optional uh, uh i believe that i have covered all the aspects for choosing an optional yes very silent crowd okay so have a nice day okay so after uh, one week or so we will have an one more demo okay if you wish you can attend that also that is for the people who have not attended today okay if you wish you can also attend that demo uh, the classes will be starting at the first week of september okay thank you thank you all thank you thank you online students for attending this session